It is take two in New Jersey's 6th Congressional District. That is where Congressman Frank Pallone is up for re-election and where Anna Little, the former mayor of Highlands and the former Monmouth County freeholder, is running against him again. And she joins us now. Welcome. I'm glad to be here. Why do it again? Well, because we did so well the first time. Mm. We actually made history in 2010. We came the closest in 24 years to defeating Frank Pallone. We think we've got a great foundation, and we want to pick up where we left off. So it's the, it's the tried and true run the first time to get known and run the second time to win? I believe so. What's, are the issues any different now in, in your mind? Is, well, are his stands any different? Oh, certainly not. I mean, Frank Pallone is Frank Pallone. He has not shifted a bit. He's not listening to his constituents at all. And that is why there is an Anna Little running against him with such success. Uh, we are looking at things just slightly differently this time around. We've always had jobs, the economy, and taxes as the main issue that we're hearing door to door. And so that's the main issue in our campaign. And we are also looking at what we call Obamacare or Pallone Care, the PAPACA, Patient Protection Affordable Care Act, uh, our constituents do not want that, that health care law. And they've asked Pallone not to vote for it. He's voting for it. But in this particular case, the religious liberty infringement is now out in front, as well as the HHS mandate, mandate and its effect upon health care institutions that are run by charitable type institutions that are faith-based. So that's a little bit more prevalent. But aside from that, it's jobs, the economy and taxes and all the way. It's a state, though, that has tracked blue, not red, in recent years. How do you pull it back? How do you change that? Well, I don't believe that the blue top level in this state is really indicative of what's going on at the grassroots. I mean, honestly, we believe strongly that we're really red at the grassroots and that as people rise up and begin to stir the pot by knocking on doors, that those at the grassroots level are going to rise to the level of elected or appointed officials. And we're certainly going to bleed through up through the top. So we're at the very least purple and could very well end up being a red state when we're done. On this big issue, the, the Health Care Reform Act, Obamacare, uh, what would you, what would, you wouldn't go back to the way things were before, I presume, because people seem to be unhappy with that as well. What would you do? Well, the system is uh, employer-driven primarily. The providers are the employers. So when you have a bad economy and people are losing their jobs, they do have a problem getting health care insurance. It's not the access to health care that's the problem. It's the insurance policies that are difficult to obtain. So we do have to look at the system. It needs to be changed. I would do you believe regulate the insurance companies? Would you demand anything of them? Or, or would you throw the market open so people could competitively buy wherever they wanted to? Well, I am a free market proponent by nature. I do think that um, if we were to open up the market and allow insurance companies to tailor their policies more to the demands of those who would be purchasing the policies and allow the policyholder to be the individual who's going to receive the benefit rather than the employer. I think those changes would be very helpful. And as I'm not against regulation per se, I do think we're overregulated in this area and a number of other areas right now. And I think by reducing the overregulation, we can get to a balance where the industry or the economy can actually balance and fo function fairly well. On the subject of, of the free market, You've been described in various ways as a favorite of the Tea Party. Is that is that a fair thing to say? And 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 what do you think of of the Tea Party per se? I think the Tea Party is wonderful. I, I don't think the mainstream media gives the Tea Party a fair shake. Tea is an acronym, taxed enough already. I think. Almost every American citizen feels like they're overtaxed and that taxes are in the way of their feeding their family. And I know that employers and job providers feel that taxes are the reason that they're not offering jobs right now. So I think that it's really a, a terrific movement. And I think it is a na nationwide movement. It's not limited to New Jersey. I am a Republican candidate. I'm on the Republican ticket. I've won the primary, and I'll be running against a Democrat opponent. And I just think that having that grassroots support is an amazing and encouraging, uh, inspiring experience. If, the, if members of, of the so-called Tea Party members, but people philosophically who feel the same way, were to be able to, to truly control the Republican Party and truly control Congress, how different would things be? Well, I do believe when the grassroots rise up and they participate fully in their government, we get the pure operation of a representative democracy, which is what the form of government that we have. Without the participation of the average citizen in that form of government, it doesn't function properly. And you get a huge disconnect between the people at the top level of government in leadership and the people that are both the governed and the government, we the people. So I do believe strongly that by rising up, these grassroots individuals are actually doing their job and they're helping our republic, our democratic form of government in the form of a republic function properly. And I think our founding fathers would be proud of that. I think they fought to give us that opportunity. And I think that the United States Constitution requires it. And a little. We have to leave it there. We'll see you down the campaign trail. Thank you. Thank you.